For today's video, I'll be going over how you can reduce the nitrate levels in your aquarium. I'll start with some quick and easy methods that will work well in most aquarium setups and then I'll move on to some more slightly advanced or specialist setups to make sure I offer a well-rounded video. Before I get into the video, I want to quickly explain where nitrate comes from in our tanks. In short, leftover fish food, fish waste, decaying plant matter and other organic materials break down in our aquariums and release ammonia. In most tanks, beneficial microorganisms then convert that toxic ammonia into toxic nitrite and then finally into the far less toxic nitrate. While nitrate isn't as harmful as ammonia or nitrite, in high enough levels it can still cause problems with your fish, shrimp and snails, but it can also encourage algae growth. And that's where the tips and tricks in this video come in to help you make sure your nitrate levels are under control and stay within the ranges that you want them in your tank. So getting into the first method, which I think is the quickest and easiest option, and it's to simply reduce the bio load in your aquarium because prevention is better than cure. Now, when a lot of people hear this, they think that I mean keeping fewer fish in your aquarium. But the good news is that you can often reduce the bio load without removing any of your current fish. As I mentioned earlier, leftover food and fish waste are both major contributors to nitrate buildup. And if we are honest, a lot of us, myself included, tend to overfeed our fish because we like to watch them eat. Now, overfeeding is slightly different for myself and anyone who keeps a Wallstad method tank because food is also used to nourish our plants, so we can increase feeding a little bit. But for a lot of aquariums, this can be a quick and easy way to reduce your ammonia in the tank, which in turn reduces the total nitrate buildup. On top of this, you can also implement the five minute rule if you haven't already, where you'll remove any uneaten food from your tank after five minutes, but different species take different amounts of time to eat, so research the fish you are keeping. The next method is keeping up with regular filter maintenance, which is often overlooked, but important when looking to control nitrate levels. Most filters can trap a surprising amount of organic material such as uneaten food, fish waste and decaying plant matter. If you've ever watched videos of people cleaning their filters, you can see how much organic material is actually trapped in the filter media. Over time, that built up organic material starts to break down and contribute to the nitrate levels in your aquarium. So, by regularly cleaning your filter, you're not only improving water flow and the overall performance of said filter, but you are physically removing the organic material before it has a chance to decompose and release ammonia, which will eventually turn into nitrate. Personally, I deep clean my canister filter that I run on my 40 gallon tank once every month and I try to make sure I squeeze out the sponge in my other filters and flip their filter floss to new cutouts every month. Now I know some creators share videos of how they've left their canister filters for many many months without servicing them but any time I've tried that I've always had an increase in the nutrient levels in the tank which results in algae. So staying on top of your filter maintenance especially if you're using canister filters in moderate to high bio load tanks is a quick and easy win when reducing nitrate levels. Next up is water changes and don't use the timestamps to skip this section because it's not what you think. I know that water changes are often the go-to recommendation to reduce nitrate levels when they reach out for help from a lot of sources but this is not always as effective as a lot of people think and in some areas water changes can actually increase your nitrate levels not reduce them. This is because the World Health Organization recommends a maximum of 50 ppm nitrate in drinking water and many countries including the United Kingdom use this as their legal limit. That means that your tap water could already contain a significant amount of nitrate when compared to your aquarium water. Home Cure is one of the largest plumbing companies serving London and the surrounding areas and they published a study that I link in the video description. Among other things, it includes this colour-coded map showing the average nitrate levels in tap water across England. Now, I'm in the northeast where tap water tends to have a very low nitrate level indicated by the dark green on the map. But, as you can see on the map, London and its surrounding areas actually have over 30 ppm of nitrate in the tap water. Now, to put this in perspective, the majority of my tanks typically sit at anywhere from 5 to 20 ppm of nitrate thanks to the heavy planting. 
And as an example, if I had my exact fish room set up that I currently have where I live and moved it down to London, doing a large water change would actually increase the nitrate levels in my aquarium. Ideally, you could get a reverse osmosis unit and then remineralize the water to suit your needs, but most people, including myself, just aren't going to do this. So instead, I recommend looking up your local tap water parameters. If you're in the United Kingdom, I link to the study in the description and you can check your area against the chart on there, but other countries should have similar resources available. But if you are living in a high nitrate tap water area, water changes can actually be counterproductive when trying to control your nitrate levels. And just in case you're curious, here's a comparison with a population density map on the left and the nitrate map from earlier on the right. I'd estimate that at least a third of people in the hobby, probably closer to half due to the population density in the southeast, actually have really high nitrate level directly out of their tap. So moving on and we get to using plants to control nitrate levels in our aquarium and there's actually two different ways we can do this so I'll cover both separately. The first method and my personal favourite involves using plants to take up ammonium before it can be converted into nitrate. Earlier in the video I mentioned that beneficial microorganisms convert toxic ammonia into nitrite and then into nitrate. While that's technically correct, it is a simplified version of what's actually happening in our aquariums. In reality, leftover fish food, fish waste and decaying plant matter release ammonium into the water. But here's the key part because in most aquariums, especially those with a low pH level, a lot of that ammonia quickly binds to excess hydrogen ions and becomes ammonium. Thankfully, ammonium is a lot less toxic than ammonia, but it's also an excellent plant food. This graph from a Diana Wallstad blog post that I link in the description interprets data from a study that tested Elodia with both ammonium and nitrate levels. As you can see, the tested plant actually prioritised ammonium uptake as its primary nitrogen source until it was depleted and then switched over to nitrate. Because of the ammonia to ammonium ratio depending on your tank's pH, free ammonia continues to be converted into the less toxic ammonium to maintain the balance when your plants remove ammonium from the water. So we can use this system to reduce the total nitrogen compounds in the tank by simply removing them at the first step before the microorganisms come into play and convert any of the ammonia or ammonium into nitrite and then into nitrate. I know that this might sound a little complex if you're new to the hobby, but here's a simplified version and in short, add fast grown stem, stall on or floating plants to your aquarium and leave them to do their thing. But that approach works best in heavily planted and lightly stocked tanks, so I want to move on to the second where we can reduce nitrate levels with plants. So for this one we're presuming you might have a more heavily stocked tank with fewer plants in there and this is where the microorganisms start to help your plants manage the nitrogen cycle in the tank so some of the leftover ammonia goes to toxic nitrite and then into the far less toxic nitrate. But like I mentioned earlier on that graph from Diana Wallstad's blog post, as the microorganisms start to help the plants to reduce ammonia and in turn ammonium, the plants will switch to nitrate for their primary nitrogen source for nourishment. Now this study is specific to Elodia, but I honestly think this works with a lot of plants in their aquatic form where they'll choose ammonium over nitrate as their primary nitrogen source when available. So this means that even if nitrate does begin to accumulate in our tanks, the plants we keep can help manage it for us and passively reduce it without us doing anything. So moving on from plants and I want to talk about how beneficial microorganisms can help control nitrate in our aquariums too. But before I get into these, I do want to mention that both of these next methods are controversial mainly because they rely on creating low oxygen zones in our aquarium which can be difficult to achieve. First up is denitrifying bacteria and the idea here is pretty straightforward. This type of bacteria waits for nitrate to build up in our aquariums and then converts the nitrate into nitrogen gas which escapes harmlessly from the water. As I mentioned though, the challenge is creating those low oxygen environments where this type of bacteria can be cultivated. 
While it is difficult to prove that this process is happening in our home aquariums, I've personally seen nitrate levels drop in some of my own tanks where there's no plants or any water changes occurring, leaving bacterial action to be the most likely explanation. The theory is that the highly porous structure of the lava rock allows water to slowly filter through the tiny holes in the rock creating different microenvironments inside. Just to try and better explain what I mean by this, here's an explanation of how I personally think this works. The outer layer of the lava rock supports the usual aerobic bacteria that process ammonia and nitrite in a lot of aquariums, but in doing so also consume a lot of the dissolved oxygen from that part of the water. As the water moves deeper into the rock, the oxygen levels drop, creating hypoxic and anoxic conditions that support different types of bacteria that are adapted to lower oxygen environments and remove that oxygen as they do their job. Finally, in the core of the rock where the oxygen has already been removed by the other types of bacteria, anoxic requirement bacteria like denitrifying bacteria can theoretically grow, converting the nitrate in the water to nitrogen gas that will passively gas out of your tank. Another possible way to create low oxygen zones is by using deep sand beds and I don't use these in any of my tanks but the theory is very similar and as the water penetrates deeper into the sand bed, different types of microorganisms start stripping the oxygen out of the water and then the useful bacteria that will reduce the nitrates will be cultivated in the deeper sections. As I mentioned this is controversial and there's no guarantees that you can do it but I did find this research paper that used pumice stone as a substrate and found that bacteria could form that passively reduce nitrate levels by over 80%. Finally, I want to cover Anamox bacteria and this one is more of a recent discovery in relative terms so there's not that much research on it yet. Like the denitrifying bacteria I just discussed, Anamox bacteria also require low oxygen environments to thrive. But here's what makes this one different because while the denitrifying bacteria wait for nitrate to turn up in your tank through other processes, the Anamox bacteria simply skip nitrate out of the process. They do this by living in low oxygen environments in our aquariums and then when both ammonium and nitrite are present at the same time, their colony will start to form in the tank. Anamox bacteria consume both ammonium and nitrite simultaneously and produce nitrogen gas as their byproduct, not nitrate. So these are helping to maintain the nitrogen cycle in our aquariums but unlike something like nitrite oxidizing bacteria that takes nitrite, and produces nitrate, these take both ammonium and nitrate at the same time and produce nitrogen gas. But the aquarium is home to a really diverse microorganism community that are all working together at the same time. This means that alongside the Anamox bacteria, you also get things like nitrite oxidizing bacteria, Comamox bacteria, ammonia oxidizing bacteria and Archaea that all work at the same time. So because of this, even if you are able to cultivate a large amount of Anamox bacteria in your tank, there will still be some nitrate produced, but you can use the other methods in the video to manage that easily because it should be far less than normal. Anyway guys, that brings the video to an end and I hope it's been helpful. Thanks for watching and good luck at reducing your nitrate levels in your aquariums.